High school sports, we've got it covered. Overtime starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Overtime. I'm Regan Holgate. And I'm Scott Lubber. We have game highlights to bring you folks as things got rolling tonight for most of our area teams. We'll bring you all three Nick 10 games, and Tim Bailey, of course, will join us to react to that action. We have NUIC games in Forreston and Durand, and a little eight-man action, too, from South Beloit. And in our Spotlight segment, a look at the impact Amar Hamlin's health scare back in January on Monday Night Football has had on high school football in this state. Some of our local coaches and trainers will fill us in on that. But for now, let's dive into those highlights, starting with the Big Northern Conference. Reagan, you were in Cardinal Country for our Gillies Heating and Air Conditioning Game of the Week. Yes, Stillman Valley hosted Dixon. The Cardinals tied for the conference championship last year. They'll definitely be in the hunt again, and the Dukes believe that they can make a run at the top. And the Dixon Dukes made a big statement to start this one. They ended the first half up 21-7. There's Tyler Shaner, the Dixon Dukes quarterback, getting some rest in. We'll start in the second quarter. That's where we find Isaiah Hirabie on the run. Quite literally, he found a hole, and it was so long. He gets tackled here right before finding the end zone. That sets up this play. Quarterback Braden Angle on on the keeper and well he's in for the score stillman breathing some life here 21 to 14 halfway through the third the cardinals trying for a comeback and Arabia has a few moves on the defensive side of the ball great read and tackle there from the senior now we're in the fourth dixon has the ball back quarterback tyler shaner can do it all and he finally airs one out here and he's got the little bro colin shaner way downfield he makes the catch. The Dukes back in the driver's seat. It's Shaner again, this time on the QB sneak and in for the touchdown. Dixon came here to make a statement and that they did. The Dukes reign supreme, winning 28 to 14. If, if you want to be at the top of the conference, you got to beat the teams that have been there, and that's Stillman Valley and Byron, um, at least in the recent history. So uh, this was step one, and uh, now we just keep working. Dixon has been known for this thing of just, like, you get up, and then something bad happens and we just crumble. That's not our team. We, we're not going to crumble. We're going to keep fighting until the last play. It's, it's a dogfight all the way. Yeah, and they did not crumble there. All right, there were five big Northern Conference teams that made the playoffs last year. Two of them were Winnebago and Rockford Lutheran. Yeah, and they both have very young teams this season, but they also have some outstanding talent. They kick things off against each other tonight at Lutheran. The Crusaders do have some weapons. One is sophomore running back Gavin Sanders. Puts his shoulder down, creates some space, and lets his speed take over. The Indians were not going to catch him. Sanders had four touchdowns under his belt early in the third quarter. Obago has a back who can make splash plays too. Supreme Muhammad, here he comes on a 65-yard touchdown run. Put Muhammad and Sanders on my big Northern Heisman watch list, along with Chris Dutch and Caden Constantine. Now, if Gavin Sanders isn't enough for Lutheran opponents to worry about, there's also this guy, Treshawn Lockhart. What a cutback here. He's only a sophomore too. He'll go the distance in the third quarter. Now, Coach Lutke has told me that Sanders has some James Robinson in him, and here's proof. Sanders reads the hole, heads outside, has great cutback ability. There that is. Then the little hop right there, and he's tough to bring down, too. So, yeah, kind of looks like JR. And when the Saders need the tough yards near the goal line, they let Big Daddy, their sophomore QB, do it. Daniel Ballard, he played nose tackle last year, so you know he's tough and strong. Sign me up for some Lutheran season tickets because these guys are fun. Lutheran wins 56 to 23. All right, in Byron, the Tigers were fired up for their home opener against Rock Falls. Byron's first drive of the game, handoff, of course, goes to Caden Considine. He barrels his way through everyone and takes it all the way home. A 38 yarder to get the Tigers on the board, 7 to 0. And well, here comes another just in Tiger fashion. This time it's Everett Wickman on the carry. Another 30 yard plus run for the Tigers offense. Actually, the Byron defense tonight also coming up big. Kai Aiken, he's going to intercept the pass here and he actually finds the edge. He's going the other way and that'll be the second pick six of the game for the Tigers. Byron pricking up right where they left off, 77 to 6. Also in the Big Northern, Genoa Kingston, the Cogs beating Rockford Christian 44-8. And the North Boone Vikings lost to the Oregon Hawks in overtime 6-0. Oh, well, we got Nick 10 action coming up next. Harlem against Auburn and Jefferson at Honaniga. And the defending champs, the Boylan Titans, looking to get started off on the right note on the road against the EC Rebs.
the Big Ten race was about as tight as it gets last year. The Boylan Titans survived, finishing one game ahead of three other teams for the championship. And a lot of key pieces from that Boylan team are back this year. They took the field tonight at Swanson Stadium against East. Javis Catlin warming up for what he hopes will be a very big season. And we're going to check him out early as he actually gets his hands on a punt. And watch him avoid one Titan here. But then Ryan Stark will just put the hammer down there and Stark gives us a little bicep flex there. Nice play there, Ryan. Erabs want to get Catlin in space, and they do here. He gets a great block by fullback Lee Smith. There he goes. Santana English has the angle on him and brings Catlin down after a 38-yard run to the two. But it's a missed opportunity because the Erabs cough up the ball at the one, and it's English, the man who just made the tackle on Catlin, who recovers for the Titans. The Titans were content to run the ball, at least in the first half. Even QB Connor Dennis takes off with it. He wisely heads out of bounds. Hey, Coach Griff, he's up there coaching the ERABs from the box this year. That's new. Titans offense trying to get something going. Scoreless in the second. It is English showing he is a two-way threat making the catch. Rasheed Johnson sat out for the Titans nursing an injury, so the Titans relied on Donovan Hanser to be a workhorse at running back. There he goes, 17 yards for a touchdown with under six minutes to go before halftime. Catlin tries to bring the ERABs back. He pops one. And he had me working on my early season backpedaling to get out of the way there. Nice run by Catlin, but the ERABs never did find the end zone. The Titans get the shutout and the win, 24 to nothing. We're joined now by our Nick 10 analyst and the performance manager at Mercy Health Top Performers, Tim Bailey. Tim, I'm used to the Titans making splash plays and not having to grind out victories as they kind of did tonight against the East ERABs. What did you see from the Titans offense? Well, the offense just came out just a little tight, um, a little rust still on the guys from, you know, two weeks, two, three weeks for camp. Um, you can tell it was week one. Um, just very rusty um, in all phases of the offensive game. The running game was a little rusty. The passing game was a little rusty. But they finally got it going in the actual second half. So, um, you know, I think it was just more so just some rust. The Titans had to actually get off of them. Hopefully next week we don't see this in the weeks going forward. All right, Tim, and the Titans actually kind of seemed content to run the ball despite having Connor Dennis. Do you think they'll throw it less than they have in recent years this season? No, I, I, I really don't. I think, um, you know, Coach Cacciatore is going to – he knows the bread and butter of their offense is the run game, um, and to have a quarterback caliber of Connor Dennis is huge. Um, I don't think they're going to go away from the passing game. I think they're going to continue to do what they've always done, mix it up and have a really good balanced offense like they did tonight. It was a balanced offense. I mean, I know they didn't put up a lot of points against um, East, but, you know, East played very well on defense. And, uh, you know, boy, they got a lot of work to do, but, you know, hopefully, you know, we can continue to see the balance with the Titans going forward. Let's expand on the ERAB's performance a little bit tonight. Again, what, what did they show you? What did Javius Catlin show you to? Well, the defense, I mean, the ERAB's, uh, the defense of the ERAB's really showed me some really, some good grit tonight. Um, they came out, played hard. Um, they made it really tough for Boylan to really run and made it really tough for, you know, Connor Dennis to get hot. Um, you know, what Catlin needs to do, Catlin needs help. Um, you know, I don't know how, how well he's going to continue to be able to play at a high clip, um, you know, with Dotson out now. And then he's, you know, he's getting a bulk of the carries. I mean, that's, that's, a, lot of, um, that's a lot of weight to carry for one guy. Um, and he plays some defense tonight, too. So um, I like what he did on offense. But again, I don't know how long he's going to be able to sustain a high level of play, playing on both sides of the ball and getting that many carries as he did tonight. All right, hang on for a minute. We're going to get your reaction to these next two games. Reagan, let's dive back in here. Yeah, the Harlem Huskies took on the Auburn Knights at Wyatt Stadium. This one started with all defense. Knights QB Anthony Purifoy can't fully handle the snap, and he's brought down for the sack. Harlem got down fourth and goal from the one, but it's bobbled off the snap, and that's a fumble. Auburn would recover into the second quarter. Harlem forcing a three and out. William Johnson punting from his own end zone, but it's blocked by Isaac Johnson. That's a safety. All right, ensuing kickoff. Ricky Hendricks takes it in, cuts back, and finds some space. He'd get Harlem across midfield, and that would lead to this three-yard QB keeper touchdown by Eric Derek Anderson to put them up 8-0 to zero in the second. Harlem took this one 12-6. Tight game there. Well, they are expecting big things in Hananiga out of the Indians this season. They were home facing the Jefferson Jayhawks. Cole Warren for Hananiga. Let's see what he does in his first senior game. Dropping back, plenty of time in the pocket all day. In fact, fires to Kevin Colwell, and hey, it's tipped and picked off. Jangelo's Roby has it, and he'll pick up some good yards on the return before Isaiah Huey brought him down. Indians would try to redeem themselves. Warren just handing the ball off this time to Luke Poppy, and Poppy breaks through. 
Four tacklers, and that would get a big 10-yard run there for the TD. Hananiga, too much for Jefferson. Cole Warren in the offense going to go right back to work here, finding Isaiah Huey. I'd give him the ball, too. Down the sideline, takes it all the way for a 36-yard TD. All Indians in this one as they win it 55-8. to eight. All right, in the other Nick 10 game tonight, Guilford on the road in Belvedere, and the Vikings won that one 28-0. All right, now, Tim, let's get your reaction, first of all, to Hananiga's impressive win uh, against Jefferson tonight. Uh, yeah, it's huge. You know, anytime you can put up those types of points, kind of tells you a little bit about where you are offensively at, in this time of the year, particularly being week one. Um, yes, you're playing a team that finished at the bottom of the, of, of the list in the conference last year in Jefferson, uh, but I think Jefferson's a better team this year, and I think Coach um, Zimmerman over that at uh, Hananiga would agree with me. Um, you know, to be expected, though, tonight of Hananiga. All right, and I think we all were maybe a little bit surprised by that Harlem score. Um, it seems like they are a contender in this conference. How, how surprised are you by that final? 12 to 6. You know, Auburn's going to fight. Um, yeah, you know, Coach cool. Tolan's had an entire year with the program that he didn't have last year. That's huge. Um, and you can tell that the guys really want to win. They want to play for him. They want to play for themselves. He's got the Auburn nation believing that they can be a championship caliber team. Um, you know, he went in and just, you know, lit a fire. And I think, you know, that's why they came out tonight and just really fought really hard. I know they didn't come up with the victory, but, you know, against the Harlem team that, you know, that's really, you know, spoke of as one of the best teams in the conference and for Auburn to come out at home and play like they did tonight. Um, yeah, it's not a W, but hey, you played hard, something to build off of. Yeah, everybody's got a lot of work to do, I think, before Absolutely, week two. Yeah. Now, Tim, you're going to launch rust tonight. You're going to launch your Bailey podcast yes. on Tuesday, I yes, believe, right? Tuesday, so yep. who, who's joining you for this? Sir? On Tuesday, uh, I got a surprise guest. Okay. I, can't, I can't let you oh. get out the back yet. So, <laughs> All um, right. How can people to, find this? Then? They can find me on uh, YouTube. Uh, first episode airs uh, August 29th. Um, you know, but again, you know, I'm excited about this opportunity, um, and I think the viewers will be excited as well. Hey, we're excited about it, too. Go listen to our guy. You listen to him on here, but go go listen to his podcast, too. All right. But don't, yeah, of course. Thanks, Tim, for the time. Of course, don't go away, though. Our story on the DeMar Hamlin ripple effect on high school football is only minutes away. Up next, though, highlights of a big NUIC game in Forreston, plus Dupec and Stockton had a thriller. Now, the NUIC should be a dogfight again this season, and we did not have to wait long for our first big battle. Yeah, definitely not. The Forreston Cardinals hosted the Fulton Steamers tonight. Taylor Castro covered that game. She joins us now to give us the lowdown on that steamy rivalry. Hi, Taylor. Hi, guys. These two teams went deep in the playoffs last season. Both have high hopes this year. Fulton is ranked third in the state in Class 1A in the preseason poll. Forreston is ranked fourth. And the Cardinals, they have a new look. They're rocking the white helmets this season. The scoring didn't start until the second quarter. Fulton strikes first with this pass from Dom Kramer to Trevor Tiesman. And Forreston's Alex Raya had himself a game. He finds a hole in the Stevens defense and hits the Jets. That run set up a Cardinals touchdown, and as you can tell, he's pretty stoked about it. Now tied at six, Owen Mulder will find his way to the end zone for two more, but Fulton has an answer. Kramer will find Balin Damhoff, and he takes it all the way in. Another two-point attempt for the Steamers, but the Forreston defense, he, they show up big for the stop. Kramer showing that he isn't just a passing threat, he takes the QB keeper himself to get the first down. But then he finds Jacob Husenga, and there's six more. The Steamers are rolling. The momentum stays with Fulton as the Hail Mary pass at the end of the half is intercepted by Tiesman. The Steamers will head into halftime with a 10-point lead, but the second half went to the Cardinals. Forreston beats Fulton 22-18. There are many more big games to come for both of these teams in the strong NUIC. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Taylor. Well, there was another enticing matchup in the NUIC tonight in Durand. The Dupec Rivermen hosted Stockton. Stockton should be much improved this season, and we know the Rivermen bring back talent. Third quarter, fourth down, Dupec down two, looking to take the lead with the pass, but it's broken up by Noah Larson. Yeah, big play there. All right, after Stockton couldn't move the ball, Dupec got it again, and Jalen now finds a hole and gets the nice scamper for a nice first down. Stockton trying to fight back. Tanner Guile going to deliver a nice hard hit there on Drew Williams. However, the Rivermen would get down to the red zone again. Fourth down in the fourth. Cooper Hoffman sends a desperation heave to the end zone corner. And check this out. Brody Black with the one-handed catch. Let's see it again. My goodness. 
What a catch. That, they went up 21 to 16 with that, and that's how it stayed. Dupec wins 20 to 16. All right, also in the NUIC, the Lena Winslow Panthers beat the West Carroll Thunder 68 to nothing, and the Eastland Pearl City Wildcats lost to Galena, the Pirates 28 to 6. Let's check out some eight man football at South Beloit. The Sobos hosted the Hiawatha Hawks. And the Sobos' Brandon Figueroa on the onside kick early on the kickoff of the game there. Isaiah Davidson recovers the ball. What a way to start the season, eh? Caden Myers in the red zone here on the 18. Fakes the handoff, throws. He's got your Dane Peterson all open there for the first score of the game. Myers is going to have a heck of a season, I think. We're going to check him out again. Drop him back. Firing. He's got a good weapon here in Des Hampton who will do a juggling act and then pull it in. And that's a 60-yard TD. How often tried to get something going here, but Sapeloid squad defense kept stopping the Hawks. Nothing doing there. Sobos win this one big by the final of 58 to 26. Also in eight-man football, the Decatur Lions lost to the Amboy Clippers 46 to nothing, while the Milledgeville Missiles beat the River Ridge Wildcats 48 to nothing. And the Peoria Heights Patriots lost to the Polo Marcos 62 to 14. In other area games, the Woodstock Blue Streaks lost to the Rochelle Hubs 0-40, and the Sycamore Spartans beat the DeKalb Barbs 42-7. Up next, it's our Overtime Spotlight segment. We're going to see what impact the DeMar Hamlin scare last January on Monday Night Football has had on the safety of our local high school teams. We were all stunned last January when Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest during a Monday night football game in Cincinnati. It's something we don't expect to see when we watch a sporting event. Fortunately for Hamlin, there were trained medical professionals at the stadium who were able to revive him. Now, the Illinois High School Association wants to ensure the same response is available for our high school athletes. How could someone so young, so physically fit, collapse of cardiac arrest? That's what flashed through the minds of everyone during that Monday night in January. You know, at first you think neck injury or something like that, but um, just the way he went down and where he was hit, I, I thought, you know, that's got to be some sort of heart issue. But we had just happened to flip the game out about five minutes before that happened, and, and when he went down, they showed the first replay. Oddly enough, that was the first thing I thought is I, I think he just had a heart attack. Rochelle head football coach Kyle Kissick just happened to be at that game in Cincinnati with his son. It was a moment that was, uh, you know, something that we'll never forget. You know, having those trainers and doctors immediately available, I think, you know, it saved his life. IHSA administrators were thinking the same thing, so they issued a directive in June for this school year that all coaches are required to complete training in CPR and training on an AED, an automated external defibrillator. It can check the rhythm of the heart so it can see if there is any rhythm or if it tells you if there's not. If there's not, it might say you need to administer a shock and it can try to shock, see if it can get the heart going again. Local schools got right on it this summer. Harlem High School was very thorough. We were very proactive. We did 75 certifications this year through all of our head coaches, our assistant coaches, as well as some of my sports medicine student athletic trainers here at Harlem. Harlem has multiple AED devices on school grounds. We've got one right here for football, we've got one over at tennis, we've got one over at baseball, we've got one inside, one outside the athletic director's office, one inside of my office, so we are very well equipped with all of this. The IHSA has declared that at no time may a team practice, travel, or compete without at least one adult present who has met this training requirement. You won't find anyone who disagrees with the IHSA mandates. We have a fantastic training staff here at Rochelle. All of our coaches uh, are trained. We feel very comfortable with where we're at. It's got to be a coach's biggest nightmare to, to see or have a player go down like that. Yeah, we've had it happen, say, twice over the years. Here's somebody that um, got hit in the head, and, and they were you know, just uh, for a few seconds lost consciousness. And those few seconds feel like minutes or hours. It is your, your worst, uh, worst feeling, worst nightmare. So that's the last thing that's supposed to be happening from going out and playing a fun game. And so um, as I said, hopefully it'll never happen, but hopefully we're all prepared if it ever did. We never want to see anything like that happen uh, to a kid. But you know, if it were to happen, we want to be prepared and ready to go. Um, just like they were in, in that game and, and really saved his life. 
Yeah, and it's not only athletes who can suffer cardiac arrest. I've seen fans of games who have gone into that. It can also happen, of course, to the officials or coaches. Yeah, another example is actually Bronny James, LeBron's oldest son. He went into a cardiac arrest last month during basketball practice. He's only 18, but luckily he is okay. Yeah, makes sense to be prepared. We'll be right back. It's that time where we bring you the best highlight captured on our cameras. It's the Napleton Auto Group play of the night. Brody Black's amazing game one, winning handed catch. And it's a touchdown. It's going to go all the way back to the corner of the end zone. One hand, Scott. My goodness. For the victory, too. A great job there. All right, let's look ahead to next week's action. In the Nick 10, the really big game will be Harlem playing at Hananiga. Belvedere will play at Freeport, East of Belvedere North, Auburn at Guilford, and Boylan at Jefferson. And in the Big Northern Conference, it's Byron at Lutheran, Dixon at Oregon, Genoa Kingston at North Boone, Rockford Christian at Winnebago, and Stillman Valley plays at Rock Falls on Saturday afternoon. These will be the games in the NUIC. Forreston at Dakota, Lena Winslow at Fulton, Galena at West Carroll, Dupec at EPC, and Hayworth at Stockton. And in eight-man football, we've got Olden Hebron at AFC, South Lloyd at Peoria Heights, Amboy at River Ridge, Polo at Orange Hill, and Hiawatha at Milford. Be sure to join us every Friday night for overtime right here on Fox 39 at 11 p.m. And remember, you can also catch our highlights anytime on our website at MyStateLine.com. That does it for this show. Have a great night, everyone. And enjoy your weekend.